For a long time, Japan has attracted millions of tourists because of its unique culture, friendly people, and impressive natural scenery. However, many tourists cannot help but be scared when learning about the taboos of this country. Whether you are a tourist, international student, or business traveler, there are things you should not do that you should always remember when coming to Japan. No Tattoos Many tattooed tourists have encountered culture shock when coming to the land of cherry blossoms, where tattoos are especially stigmatized. They can't even experience what is most famous for tourists in Japan. People with tattoos are banned from most onsen, sento, izakaya, and restaurants. Traditional boarding houses, swimming pools, gyms, or even capsule hotels also prohibit tattoos. In Japan, tattoos are associated with the image of the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. The whole world is familiar with the image of the Japanese Yakuza with full-body tattoos, thanks to movies and social networks. In addition, tattoos are also stigmatized because they are associated with a disrespected class. Since the Edo period when criminals were punished with tattoos, prostitutes, also known as Yujo, also got tattoos to show their dedication to serving loyal customers. Tattoos gradually became illegal during the Meiji period and were only legalized in 1948. In many cases you are not allowed to show your tattoos although attitudes are gradually changing among the younger generation. Therefore it is generally accepted for foreigners to have tattoos, but they are required to cover them up when in public places. In 2013, Ranes Ataru and Mayori came to Hokkaido to attend an indigenous language conference but were not allowed to enter the hot springs because of the traditional Tomoko tattoo on his face. Tattoos in other countries can be seen as beauty and a memory, but in Japan, they are not recognized like that because the majority of Japanese people are very conservative in nature. Number 14. Say no to tips. If you have the opportunity to visit a restaurant in Japan, don't be too surprised if you see the waitstaff running after you to give you your change, even if it's just a few yen. Tipping is not a way to compliment your server. Japanese people believe that when a customer gives them a tip, it means the customer is dissatisfied with the service and wants to say, please try harder next time. Tipping is considered very rude and insulting to the restaurant and the staff working there. The reason is that they value dignity and respect much more than tips. The Japanese believe that you have already paid for good service, so there is no need to pay extra by tipping. Japan is one of the very few countries in the world that offers truly spectacular service without any strings attached. However, there are some notable exceptions to this rule, which we will discuss a bit more. Instead of money, Japanese people show their love for service staff through a small gift called an origami tip, a meticulously folded piece of paper containing gratitude and appreciation for service staff. This is different from the pragmatism of giving thanks with money. This is the beauty of Japanese behavioral culture, full of sincerity and warmth. Regarding money, Japanese people are not greedy and do not evaluate all other values by money. Don't use money to replace what your heart wants to say because they understand the nature of money, which cannot bring people better intangible values. Number 13. Ban working too much. I know this law seems pretty crazy, but it was actually enacted by the Japanese government to save the lives of Japanese workers. While most of us don't want to spend all our time at work, the Japanese do the exact opposite. They work like crazy day and night, working until they are exhausted and die. You heard right, the Japanese really work until they die of exhaustion. Besides the usual eight hours of administrative work, statistics show that a quarter of Japanese workers work more than 80 hours a month, nearly three times the standard in many other countries. Each year in Japan, there are nearly 2,000 work-related deaths, mainly due to strokes, heart attacks, depression, and suicide. One in five workers is in the group at risk of death from overwork. The tradition of working overtime in Japan began in the 1970s, when the wages of workers in this country were relatively low, and they wanted to maximize their income. During the economic boom years of the 1980s, Japan became the second largest economy in the world, and the culture of working long hours was still maintained. When the economic and financial crisis occurred in the late 90s, companies began to restructure. The pressure was extremely great, employees stayed and worked overtime to avoid being fired, many workers tried to appear happy with overtime for fear of being judged on their spirit and working attitude, and gradually this became a work culture, leading to the phenomenon of Kiroshi, the name of the cult culture that encourages working until death. 
Work pressure also makes many Japanese people think of suicide, as evidenced by the fact that Japan has the highest number of suicides in the world. Japan also has a suicide forest called Aokigahara, where it is said that for every tree, there is a person who hanged himself. Number 12. Women are not allowed to go to sacred land. Women are half of the world but in some places in Japan, they are considered a disaster, dirty, and not allowed to set foot in sacred places. The most famous of the places where Japanese women are forbidden is Mount Omine. Mount Omine is the common name for the mountain known as San Inamura de Fu Misen Hak. Among them, on top of Shogutla, there is an ancient temple that was recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 2004. However for centuries, women have been completely banned from visiting the mountain and the sacred temple. The reason is to avoid polluting the atmosphere. Today discrimination has decreased, but the rules at this sacred peak remain unchanged. In front of the path leading to the top of the temple mountain, there is even a sign clearly stating this rule. In addition to Mount Omine, another famous place that also prohibits women is Oshima Island located in Kyushu. This island is also recognized as a World Cultural Heritage Site because of its great historical value. According to the rules people coming to the island can bring objects to worship but are not allowed to take anything off the island, not even a stone. Not only that but there is also a rule here that men must wash before going to the island, while women are forbidden to go on the island. Japanese women are also not allowed to set foot in the sumo ring, not allowed to register marriage six months after divorce, and face many other harsh rules. It can be said that despite being an extremely developed country, Japan still has discrimination against women. Number 11. Taboo Numbers. Each country in the world has its own ideas about numbers that bring bad luck, and they avoid using these numbers. The Japanese are the same, they abstain from the number 4. This comes from the Japanese people's belief that the number 4 has a homophone pronunciation with the word sha, meaning death. Therefore, the number 4 is said to bring bad luck. People in Japan are also afraid of this number. To avoid using the number 4, Japanese people often employ many different methods to avoid encountering bad luck. For example, some buildings' elevators do not have the number 4. Instead, they number this floor as 3A or replace it with the letter T. Some apartment buildings, offices, and hospitals do not have the fourth floor numbered. This makes many tourists visiting Japan think they have gone to the wrong place when they cannot find the fourth floor. Like the number 4, the number 9 is considered an unlucky number in Japan because the pronunciation of the number 9 is similar to the word Kurushimu, meaning suffering in Japanese. Most hotels in this country do not have room numbers 9, 4, or 49. This causes a big conflict in cultures as in the US the number 9 is considered lucky. American people love this number and consider it a perfect number. Number 10, Gifts That Are Forbidden To Give Japanese people love giving gifts. This is considered an indispensable ritual in their daily life. In an average year there are about 70 occasions when Japanese people give gifts to each other. Some important occasions include New Year's Day, gifts for Father's Day, Mother's Day, promotions, birthdays, and other occasions such as weddings, good news about the family, welcoming new members, admission ceremonies, graduations, coming of age, welcoming a new home, and visiting the sick. It seems that because there are so many occasions to give gifts, they have also come up with many rules for doing this, especially regulations about gifts that should not be given. First, absolutely avoid giving gifts related to the numbers 4 and 9. The reason for this is, as we just said, these are two numbers that Japanese people are very superstitious about. Next, you should not give a Japanese person a hair comb because the word comb in Japanese is kushi. The Q is endurance or suffering, and she is a homophone with the word death. Both of these misfortunes are combined. Additionally, you should not give pictures of foxes, glassware, or cutlery. Gifts in the shape of a fox are considered undesirable because they believe this animal symbolizes greed and cunning. Do not give items made of glass or fragile materials because they will bring bad luck in relationships. Do not gift sharp items such as cutlery as it is believed to sever your relationship. Most importantly, you cannot give chrysanthemums or tea flowers. If you have to give flowers to Japanese people you should avoid chrysanthemums and tea flowers because these are flowers used for funerals in Japan. If you intentionally give this gift to Japanese people, they may get angry and think you are cursing them and their family. 
Number 9. Don't sit cross-legged. In most countries, sitting cross-legged is very normal. However, the Japanese have become particular about banning this style of sitting. Of course, the Japanese government does not prohibit it, but if you do this when you come to Japan, you will be viewed as rude and dangerous in the eyes of the Japanese. In Japanese culture, there is a particular emphasis on respecting others, especially in public spaces or when participating in meetings. Sitting cross-legged can be considered impolite because it can create a feeling of discomfort or annoyance. Japanese people think that this sitting position is provocative and extremely rude. Only cheap prostitutes sit in such a position to invite customers. When coming to Japan instead of sitting cross-legged, sit in the Seiza style which involves sitting on your knees, a traditional Japanese way of sitting that promotes a neat posture. Number 8. Do not give up seats to the elderly on the bus. Japan is a country famous for its politeness and many noble rules but it has a paradoxical rule of not giving up seats to the elderly. Could it be that the Japanese are just a bunch of fake people? Japanese people don't fake it. They really do it for a good reason. In Japan today, public transportation always has priority compartments for the elderly, pregnant women, children, and people with disabilities. If this row of seats is full, the next person coming will have to stand. Of course, it will be uncomfortable for a young person to see an old person standing on a bus, but they cannot do anything else because the old person himself does not need their help. Giving up your seat is a very normal thing in many parts of the world, but in Japan, this can make them feel uncomfortable. In Japan, people always consider everyone in society to be equal, meaning if you arrive first, you will get a seat, and the person who comes after you will stand. No one would complain about why a man doesn't give up his seat for a woman, or why healthy young people don't give up their seats to the elderly. When you come to Japan, if you really want to give your seat to someone, stand up, pretend to get off at the station, or change to another line. Then the Japanese will sit down comfortably, and they won't have to think about you giving up your seat for them. Number 7. Smoking outdoors is prohibited. This is one of the most controversial regulations in Japan, as it is both reasonable and unreasonable. Since 2018, Japan has introduced a new law prohibiting smoking in public places. It is known that the law aims to prevent the dangers of passive smoking and applies to schools, hospitals, government agencies, and local authorities. Agencies that allow smoking will be fined an amount equivalent to $4,600. Individuals who break the law will be forced to pay up to $2,700 if they smoke in the wrong place, despite warnings. At the same time, the law also regulates places specifically reserved for outdoor smoking. Despite bringing great benefits to the community, it is difficult to understand why, in other crowded places such as restaurants and hotels, the Japanese government still allows smoking in restaurants and bars as well as in other public places. This private corporation causes great discomfort to the Japanese people. If it is banned, it must be completely banned, otherwise it should be as before, and allow them to smoke outdoors. After all, at least the amount of air circulating in the streets will dilute cigarette smoke more than the stuffy air in restaurants. Number 6. Avoid touching. In Japan, touching another person without their consent is considered rude. This is the minimum courtesy in Japanese culture where each person respects the personal space of others. If you visit Japan, don't touch people. Even shaking hands is not recommended in this country. Japanese people believe that shaking hands is quite silly and impolite. Instead, they bow at an angle of about 90 degrees to show politeness and respect to the other person. If you meet someone of high status or an elderly person, bowing deeply will help them feel that you respect them. Kissing in public is also considered disrespectful to others in Japan. Before 1945, it was seen as a violation of public order and was punishable by imprisonment. Although cultural attitudes and legal regulations in Japan have undergone many changes, the ban on kissing in public can be understood in the context of Asian culture, where public displays of affection are less accepted than in many Western countries. However, over time, many of these regulations have become more flexible, and are no longer as strictly applied as before. Currently, kissing in public is no longer illegal in Japan, but there is still a cultural restraint and respect when showing affection in public spaces. Number 5. Do not dirty the rice. Japan is a country famous for its harsh rules at the dinner table. From clearly regulated things like not passing food with chopsticks or using the tips of chopsticks to point at others, 
to unspoken principles that must always be implicitly understood, the Japanese strive to avoid becoming clumsy, ignorant, and rude in the eyes of those around them. For example, whether you should pick up food and put it on white rice in a bowl before eating is a matter of debate. Just picking food into a bowl or putting food straight into your mouth is enough to make people judge you. It can be annoying to pay attention to so many things when eating, but this trivial issue is very important to Japanese people. One side advocates putting food on rice before eating, while the other side strongly opposes this way of eating, arguing that it causes the eater to lose points. Most Japanese people hate the idea of putting food on rice, saying it dirties the rice and diminishes the flavor of each dish. Therefore, if you have the opportunity to dine in Japan, it's best not to put food on top of the rice. Number 4. Do not wear shoes into the house. Wearing shoes or slippers inside a house or room will make Japanese people judge you as disrespectful. So, take off your slippers or shoes in front of the door and instead wear your own pair of slippers indoors. Otherwise, you can wear socks or go barefoot. The rule of changing slippers before entering the house has been around for about 2,000 years due to the hot and humid weather in summer. The architecture of traditional houses often features floors higher than the ground to avoid moisture and allow cool winds to circulate, helping to reduce heat inside. Furthermore, in traditional houses, tatami mats cover almost the entire floor surface. Wearing shoes on a mat would be unhygienic and could damage the tatami. In the book Working Culture with a Japanese, first published in 1984, Sociologist N emphasized the importance of internal space called T. The inside of the house is considered a clean private place compared to the dusty and chaotic outside. Most traditional houses have a separate entrance hall between these two spaces, a place to change shoes into slippers. In addition to cleanliness, removing shoes is also considered a sign of respect when entering someone's home or place of business. This way of thinking is less strict in modern life but many people still pay attention to it. Therefore, before entering, Japanese people often ask the homeowner or business owner whether they can comfortably wear outside shoes or not. Number 3. Do not eat while walking. A famous British YouTuber named Jack recounted his shocking experience while traveling to Japan. While he was walking on the street and enjoying takoyaki, he was looked at with unsympathetic eyes by people passing by. Two older men even cursed and chased him away. Jack was extremely confused when encountering such a situation, and after finding out the reason, he was even more perplexed. In fact, the unpleasant attitude he received from passers-by was simply because he was eating while moving, an action that is extremely normal in most countries around the world. In Japan, people do not eat or drink while traveling. They believe that eating on the road or on the subway affects those around them, as the smell of food and the noise of chewing can annoy others. If you intentionally eat on the street, you may be scolded by the elderly or looked at with disapproval. Number 2. Do not use chopsticks to pick up food for others. The Japanese are among the most sensitive people in the world. They are very sensitive to tattoos, touching, and even basic acts of showing affection, such as picking up food for others. This act is prohibited in Japan. People often use chopsticks to pass the remaining bones of the deceased during cremation. Therefore, using chopsticks to pass food to others is considered impolite, akin to cursing the person receiving the food. Sticking chopsticks in a bowl of rice is also strictly prohibited. The Japanese are influenced by many ideas from Confucianism and Buddhism. Sticking chopsticks into a bowl of rice resembles burning incense for the deceased. If you do that during a meal you will likely be kicked out of the house and humiliated by the hosts. The advice for anyone wanting to visit Japan is to use chopsticks only for eating. Don't do anything else with them if you don't want to get into trouble with the locals. Number 1. Whistling at night is forbidden. Japanese children are often warned by adults not to whistle at night. There are many opinions that whistling at night is simply a method to scare children into going to sleep quietly. In addition to this, there are many stories about snakes associated with whistling sounds. For example, there is a short story about a man with a cruel mind who often killed people by controlling a poisonous snake and relying on the sound of the wind at night. If he hated someone he would order the snake to bite that person to death. Snakes can perceive the sound of whistling almost as if they are being called. Therefore, people who train snakes often use whistles to signal them. The Japanese also believe that if you whistle at night, demons will come. Additionally, there is a belief that thieves will come. As in the past, thieves used whistles to signal each other. When you whistle, villagers may mistakenly think you are one of the thieves' accomplices. Thank you for watching the video about 15 forbidden things in Japan with us. Despite being famous as a developed country, 
Japan still has many strange, harsh, and even discriminatory laws. Let's continue to explore and learn about the mysteries hidden deep in the culture and history of every country. Don't forget to like and subscribe to discover new content together in the future. Thank you, and see you on your next adventures.